Hey, welcome. Thank you for watching. We are glad that you are continuing with us as we talk about godliness, goal of a disciple. And it's our prayer for everyone that really the desire is that every person knows that is a follower of Jesus, knows their disciple, and wants to be like their master Jesus. They're, they're, it doesn't get any better than being like Jesus. When you're like Jesus, you you really grow into this ever-expanding a joy-filled life that you just naturally uh, pass on to others. As we look today, it's it's really a big one. Uh, we're going to look uh, at loving like Jesus, and I think from uh, certainly from a mental ascent or the way we think, most people would agree that man, if more people loved like Jesus, the world would be a better place. And uh, and so for us, we we go this 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 is something that every follower of Jesus needs to. Uh, to not only be anchored in, not just understand about, uh, but live in and grow into uh, this loving relationship with the Lord so that so that you can receive it and ultimately recycle it in a world that is so filled with hate, that's so filled with with stuff that is just uh, hurtful and harmful to everyone else. And when even when you bring up the word love in this world, a lot of times people have a misconstrued idea. They think that if someone loves me, they're going to meet these lists, this list of, of requirements. They're going to do this for me. And, and thus making love really self-centered rather than others centered. And, uh, and that's a big part of what we're going to talk about. In fact, let's look in the scripture in uh, John chapter 14. Uh, Jesus says these words. He says, these things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the helper the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Um, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Uh, you heard me say to you, I'm going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater, uh, is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I no longer talk, uh, will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. So this 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 love that Jesus is referring to is is a love that comes from him. It is him. In fact, he lived a life uh, a growing in the love of the Father. He didn't come out of uh, he didn't come out of his mother's womb knowing how to love. It was it was something that he grew into. In fact, the ultimate expression of of the love was was being obedient to the Father even to the cross. And and he and he did it. His main purpose, his main motivation for going to the cross was so that all the world throughout all of time would know that he loved the Father. Because there's there's this expression that is born out of an authentic love. Now I want to give a a statement that may seem a little Dr. Seuss like, but I I I say it because I in this manner because I think we need to get it. Because I think so many people think, well, I just need to decide to love. I need to make a decision as if, uh, as if, um, love was just a, a decision of the will that you could conjure up in your own humanness and, and make happen. Mm -hmm. When actually, certainly there's, there's a level of love that's described that, you know, if you do these certain things, it's going to be, it's going to be love because there have been many people who've not followed Jesus and been in a love relationship with a spouse for, you know, 50, 60, 70 years or plus. But, but true love, uh, true love can only be, uh, received, uh, from the one who is love. And that's Jesus Christ. And so here's the statement. And I, I want to say it a couple times to you. Living loved precedes living loving. Living loved. This is that receiving part, being able to live knowing without a doubt that I am loved for who I am, not having to, to measure up to something, not having to, to earn that kind of love, but being able to live uh, being loved. That precedes, that comes before my ability to live loving other people. And, and that's what Jesus did. Jesus learned to, to be loved from his natural parents, his, from Joseph and Mary, but he also knew and learned to be loved from the heavenly father. 
And as he spent 30 years growing in this dynamic of living loved, then you find that he moved into his his public ministry, this ministry that is recorded in Scripture, being able to express love to others. And that didn't just happen. It was born out of a life lived in a loving relationship with ultimately his heavenly father. And that's our prayer for, for not just ourselves, but for you as well, that you would, that you would learn to live loved so that you can live being a loving person. And I think that's a, that's a big part of what we're going to talk about today. As we talk about, there really is a process of, of that starts in the privilege of it. It does. Yeah. And I, I just love the way you put that because even if it's a Dr. Seuss thing, I just, I don't think I read too much Dr. Seuss in my life, but living loved is, is the key to being a loving individual. Unless you know you're being loved, it's really hard. Unless you've received love, you can't really respond very well. And so this is what we're talking about is a, a love that you can receive a love that demands in us a kind of a response. And then then we get into the place where now we know what it feels like to be loved and we start to become loving. Mm -hmm. And so living loved precedes living a loving lifestyle. And I, I just love that because that's a that's kind of what the Lord said. And and to go back to that scripture, the first time that I read that scripture, I was just incredibly impressed because I had been a Christian long enough to, or at least around Christians long enough to get the idea from some of them that the motivation of Jesus <clears throat> is his love for humankind. And so, you know, there were then uh, there were popular songs like when he was on the cross, I was on his mind and all of this kind of thing that somehow Jesus had this this loving heart for every lost person in the world, of course, including me. I'm not saying he doesn't, but that that was kind of his motivation to go to the cross. That was what kept him on the cross. That was that was what kept him there and kept him from calling angels down to cancel the whole thing and, you know, do all of that because of his his incredible love for humankind. And Jesus says in this scripture, that's not true. It is his love of the Father. I love that. It, it what is the motivation that carries Jesus to the cross? It is his love of the Father, so that the world will know that I love the Father. I'm going to do what He's commanded me to do. Let me remind you that John 3:16, which is like this key scripture, says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And so this is God the Father who is giving His only begotten Son through the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, to save us from our sins. And so it is this love that proceeds from the heart of God. This is a this is something you've got to learn. Uh, you've got to learn how this love works inside of you in order for you to start to live this loved lifestyle. And, and once you do that, then loving becomes sort of second nature to you. And so that's that's kind of the process that we want to look at today, that there is a, a receive component to this, uh, there's a respond component to this, and then there's a, a kind of a recycling component. And one leads to the other, but clearly the priority is on uh, where does it start? Where does it, where does it come from? It comes from the heart of an amazing, loving father who cares for us and, and loves us. And this is what informed the life of Christ. You know, he, I'm sure, you know, he, he doesn't, as you said, he doesn't walk out of the womb. He doesn't come out speaking and teaching. He doesn't, the reason he knows the scripture is because he's read the scrolls. The reason he believes is because he's been trained to believe. Now, the spirit of God has birthed him into this, but he's been instructed in this and he has to learn this. And, and clearly he's learning it as he goes through almost 30 years of uh, not miraculous ministry, but the tedium of uh, living life, mm -hmm. of, of, of learning your, your loved by God learning that you're actually the child of God, learning that the motivations of your heart are different than those around you. You're, you're not as self-interested as you are 
God interested, as you are worship interested. It's a it's an interesting thing. We use phrases uh, uh, in in our network of ministries that speak to these redemptive relationships that we're in, and and so that through this network of redemptive relationships, our goals are to inspire and inform, and train and transform, and mobilize and mentor you in this Christ life relationship. But that's the exact same thing. That's that's learning, living. And loving. And so the inspire and inform piece of this, it marries itself really powerfully to Jesus' relationship with the Father. He knows he's the Son because he learns this obedience. He learns this relationship. He learns this love. The Father loves me. And I and I just love this. It's it's not because, not so that. There's not, you know, I, I need a reason for this. I need to qualify for this. He loves me when I'm good, but he doesn't love me when I'm bad. And, and we we labor with these kind of things. Maybe you're a person who's labored like this. I certainly have met enough Christians who labor this way, who kind of believe that, that yeah, the Lord loves me. Father loves me. I know, I know the love of the Father, but, but he loves me better when I'm better. And he doesn't love me as much when I'm bad. And so it's really not about you. It's then, I mean, it's really not about the Father. It's really about you when you start to think that way. But this is not how Jesus lived. Jesus lived an inspired and informed life. I am the Son of God. And I I can hear his mom saying that. You know, hey, you may look like all the other kids, but you're not like all the other kids. You know, let me tell you the story of the birth again. Let me tell you the story of how, how you were conceived in our family. Let me tell you how this works. It, let me let me let me give definition to some of these things. And so I think it is a a learning relationship. Uh, believing it is an important part, but receiving it is how it happens. We it's a uh, this is the beautiful truth of the scripture. As many as receive him. To them, he gives the power to become the sons of God. So you've got to ultimately believe that God loves you with an everlasting love. And he's not about to change his mind. He is, he just is this loving father. And and why would he do that? Because he is. Because he's loving. God so loved the world. Everything you see about God is essentially loving. It's an amazing loving kindness that comes from the Lord. And, And so when Jesus has this, now he is able to produce this in the lives of those around him because he's he learns it and then he begins to live out of this mm-hmm. in the name of the Lord. So it's a privilege that God brings to us in our lives. We are beloved children of God. That's just the reality. We are beloved children of God. What he does for us, he does because he loves us. Mm-hmm. I think that's awesome. Yeah. The, the beautiful thing about that is it's out of that it's this invitation that we're invited into this loving relationship, but then then there really is a response to it. There is this uh, this being invited into the classroom of love that uh, the Lord ultimately wants us to make a priority, so that we are trained and transformed. You find that in that scripture, it, the, the the Holy Spirit moves us into this place of uh, this learning what it means to live loved. Uh, and and it's in that environment that all of a sudden we begin to go, okay, now I start to think differently about myself. Now, because I'm not so centered on me, living self-centered. Now I'm I recognize that there's one out there that that wants what's good for me, that you take delights in me, that wants good things for me. Uh, I begin to seek after that relationship. I start looking after that. And in that, in that the Spirit begins to remind me of what it's like, to teach me what it's like to live in love. And there, there's this, this wonderful marriage in the Scripture between the, the teaching of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of peace. Because what happens is when we step into that classroom of love, when we step into that place where we are, we're going to really be trained and transformed into a loving uh, a person who lives loved, uh, then that is intended to happen uh, at a time of peace, because the Holy Spirit brings peace to troubled hearts. He's the one that that calms. And in, uh, in it's written uh, in another place this way, that the peace of God surpasses our understanding, but it guards our hearts, our hearts 
and minds in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So in a world that is ever bringing a, a growing onslaught of, of hurt and hate into a person's life, when we come into the presence of the one who is love, and the Holy Spirit begins to teach us. It's during those peaceful times that we learn that it doesn't matter what the world does to me. I'm loved by the one who's perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm loved by the one who created this whole world. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in love and loved by this one who will ultimately take control of this world once again. Uh, and so, uh, it frees me and it liberates me to really, to really grow and allows me to become who he intended me to become all the time. I've used this phrase a number of times. Uh, here's what, here's what a life looking for love does. It, it, it ultimately creates a human doing because you're always trying to do to get love. But a person who is uh, in this love relationship with the Heavenly Father and, and receiving and learning to live loved, they become a human being. Mm. And that's what we were created to be, a human being. I, I, I can be loved. I don't have to do. I can be loved. And that's what the Heavenly Father wants to teach you and I, that in our times with Him, we learn that uh, it's not what we do that creates the love. It, the love already exists. We live in that love. And out of that love, ultimately, we're, we're, trans, we're transformed into people who are, are confident. We're transformed into people who are not trying to live up to the expectations of others, who are not trying to manipulate out of guilt to get people to love them back or to do what we think they should do. Because the one who could do everything for me has already done it. And, and I live in that love. And, I, and, it, and literally, that's why that's such a priority for me. Because as I live in that love, I can love better. Why? Because I've received it. And then I become a partner ultimately with that one who is loving me. Yeah, it is, it's an amazing transformational experience. And you several times in, in speaking about this priority that we have in, in living in the love of God, we, we learn it by revelation, but as we then begin to respond, uh, we we learn this love of God and we it becomes a lifestyle. Uh, learning is a key phrase though, not earning. Mm -hmm. yeah, learning. That's good. And it's a that's a huge difference because so many times there's so much about life that you know we you gotta you gotta do this to get that. You know, nobody gets nothing for nothing. You know, nothing's free. Well, okay, God loves us with an everlasting love. And so loves the worldly, so loves the sinning sinner who sins while they're sinning, that in spite of our fallenness, he gives his only begotten son to, to cause us not to have to perish and pay the wage of sin, but to have everlasting life. Why? Because he loves us. And, and if you can learn that, it'll change how you live. You don't have to earn that. You can't earn that. It's given us in Christ Jesus the Lord. And that's why it's it's the priority of our life because it's this amazing privilege. We are heirs. I just you have to get this. We the scriptures filled with this, but we don't think this way because we're not. <laughs> we're worker bees. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if we're going to get something, boy, we've got to pay the price to get it and we got to do those things and da da da. And and we look at people like you know, the Paris Hiltons of the world or the various heirs and heiresses of the world. And we just, we, we just are, we think they're frivolous. We think they're silly, but it's part of it's because we don't understand what it means to be an heir. What it means essentially to be an heir is that, you know, all this stuff that I have, all this, this spending that I do, all this, this, uh, buying that I enjoy, all the sharing with all my friends that I have the capacity to do, I didn't earn it. It's my dad's money. <laughs> it's it's Abba's source. And and in some level of reality, I think we need to get this because this is the privilege. We are we are loved by the eternal God who is himself loving. John, who who wrote of himself saying, I'm the disciple that he loves, told people again and again, you need to live in this love of God. This is the greatest privilege. This is the greatest priority in all of your life. And so once you get a, a handle on doing that, it's never going to stop. He's never going to run out. 
And then you can partner with this God. You can start spending his money. You can start loving from his love. And so living loved gets you into the place where you begin to become loving. You, you start living this loving lifestyle and you're, you're freely giving it away. People don't have to earn this love from you. They don't have to, you know, oh, you got to qualify. We, we don't love you because. We don't love you when. We don't love you if. We love you because we've been transformed by the love of God. And he's made us to be loving. When it speaks in the scripture about, you know, loving your enemies and praying for those who are who use you, typically when we start out doing those kind of things, we do it because of obedience. We look at the prescription and go, okay, well, I got to pray for my enemies. Oh, God kill them all, you know, or, oh God, at least make them sad. At least make them, you know, challenge them enough that they'll come to me and apologize and I'm, I can be gracious and forgiving of them. But that's really not the plan of God. The plan of God is actually to 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 let the love of Christ so inhabit our thoughts and our minds that as we begin to pray for them and we get past that place, he begins to reveal his love, and that love begins to make sense to us. That love that trains and transforms us now sort of mobilizes us. It sort of comes out of us. We begin to bubble over with this love of Christ. And so when we think about our enemies, we don't think about revenge. We don't think about the pain that they've caused us. We think about the plan of our heavenly loving Father for their lives. And we've been inspired by that. We've been informed by that. We've been trained by that. We've been transformed by that. And so now being mentored of the Lord, doing what he's asking of us to do, we're mobilized. We're out there. We're doing it. Jesus said it. He said it in the scripture so that the world will know that I love the Father. That's why I'm doing this. You know, I came, he said it in John 6, 38. It's, it's recorded in John 6, 38. I came down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. Why? Because I'm I'm I have this privilege of being loved of the Father. And because of that, the priority of all my world is love. And so when he gives a commandment to his disciples, he says, listen, you know, the, the Big Ten, the 603 editions you guys have made, all the rules and the regs, you know, it all boils down to one thing. If you will love one another the way that I love you, the this this received responded to and recycled love from the Father. If you'll love that way, then everything else will work itself out. And everyone will know everywhere you go that you're actually my disciples because you have this love one for another. And so I I, I just think it's if we're going to love like Jesus, <clears throat> we're going to get it from the Father. Mm -hmm. We're going to get it and, and we're going to learn that love. And, and, and then our lifestyle is going to begin to become transformed and trained by this love of Christ so that as we move through life, as we, as we walk through our mobile world, we are, we are in a constant contact with him. The, the love of Christ trains our hearts and minds, informs us about the situations that are going on around us. And so we, 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 ultimately get to spend the Father's love. We get to spend the Father's resources. We get to uh, share from the heart of the Father. Yeah, I know what you think, <clears throat> but you need to know what he thinks. And so here we are. You know, why, why would you do that? Well, because we have it. And we can't run out of it. That's the other thing about being an heir that I just think is awesome. You know, you can't, you can't love so much that you've run out. Mm -hmm. You can't love from the heart of God more than God already loves from his heart. And so uh, this is loving like Jesus. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, thank you that, Lord, you loved us. And, Lord, you loved us and sent your son. And the, in that, Lord, is this, this principle that, uh, Lord, as we learn your love, as we, uh, as we live in your love, Lord, that we, too, can be sent by the Father so that we might love like the Father has and does love us. Yeah. And so, Lord, I pray that every person that is hearing this will receive the love that is of the Father, yeah. and they will set aside their, their, their past of trying to earn it and qualify for it and just yeah. be loved. Yeah. 
And Lord, and I pray that Lord, as, as they're in that Lord, that there is going to be this transformation that's going to take place as they're, they're trained, uh, in this, in this loving relationship. So that ultimately, Lord, more and more, uh, and an ever expanding church is mobilized, uh, with the love of the Father to go into this world and see the kind of change that can only happen through the love that was expressed by the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. And so we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Please like us on Facebook or go and like us on YouTube. Share it on Facebook. Get the word out there. We want to partner with you. So please help us. I pray for a blessed week for you and we'll see you next time.